Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be starting the final assembly of the shop stool. So the first thing that I need to do is drill the hole so I can fit the legs to the chair seat. On a Windsor chair each leg is angled away from the chair seat in two different directions. If you're looking at the front of the chair all four legs in that perspective are angled away from the chair at 105 degrees. If you turn the chair to the side, the front legs are also angled away at 100 degrees and the rear legs are angled away at 110 degrees. So to keep track of all that, I've set up a couple of boards and I have the angles that I need to follow drawn onto these boards. And then I'm going to be using a framing square to make sure that these guidelines are lining up exactly with the center point of the drill hole. I have the front of the seat facing me and I'm set up here to drill one of the rear leg holes. I'm drilling from the top down so the drill is going to be angled towards me so that the leg underneath the chair is going to be angled away from the center of the chair. I'm using a drafting square here to extend the guideline out to the drill so I can establish the correct angle. The next time I do this I'm going to set this up on a very low bench so I can stand over top of the drill. That'll make it a lot easier to keep the drill in position as I set up the two angles. You'll notice that as I'm setting up the angle my hand tends to move a bit because I don't have any way of bracing it against anything so it was a little awkward. And here I've just reset up everything on the left hand side to drill the left rear leg. This system works fairly well and it does drill a pretty accurate hole. The only problem I ran into is here I am actually following the angle for one of the front legs, not the rear leg. And by the time I realized what had happened, it was too late to do anything about it. The next time I do this, I'll keep all the guidelines separate so that there's no chance of this ever happening again. I'm actually surprised that I didn't set it up that way because I usually try to reduce the amount of thinking that I have to do because I know that I'm pretty easily confused if there's a lot going on. And then for the front it's just a matter of turning the seat around and then setting up the system again to be able to follow the guidelines that I need to uh, drill those holes. And I did manage to drill those holes correctly so there's just one leg that's a little wonky. So I have all the holes drilled out with a half inch pilot bit. The next step is to ream out these holes so they fit the tapered portion of the leg. Getting the tapered portion of the leg to lock in tightly into this socket is the key to the whole chair. So if you're planning on building a Windsor chair, get the tapered reamer first and then make sure that the legs are turned exactly to fit that reamer. Here I'm just drilling part of the way down so I can get each leg positioned into the chair seat and I can start to see how the angles are lining up. The reamer does naturally want to follow the pilot hole but if that pilot hole is off by a little bit uh, you can pull the reamer over to the one side and cause the top of the hole to drift over so that you can correct that angle. So you get each leg started and then you decide which ones need to be corrected to get uh, everything back in line. So at this point I can lock all four legs into the seat and I can start lining up each set of legs to see how they fit.
At this point it's really obvious that one of the angles on this leg is really off and I haven't quite figured out how that happened. The other three legs are very close. They're just going to need minor adjustments to bring them in line, but this one's way off in left field. So I'm going to push the reamer as far as I can to try to correct that hole, but there's a limit to how far I can go because if I go too far I'm going to wind up with an oval socket at the top and that's going to make the leg totally useless. So I'm just going to have to correct it as much as I can and live with it. The nice thing about these chairs is that there are so many angles and you know things going on, and especially once you get the stretchers in, that it's really hard to tell what's lined up and what isn't. So until you have it on a square surface where you can actually see how the legs aren't sitting in correct proportion with each other, there it's really hard to tell what's going on. So even though this is going to make the assembly of the chair a little more complicated, when it's all done, uh, you're really going to have to examine the chair closely to see that there's something that's off. That is, if you're not a professional chair maker. But regardless, I'm still going to wind up with a very sturdy chair that's, uh, you know, very comfortable to sit in. So I've corrected the angle as much as I can on that bad leg, but here's where it really starts to cause problems and slow the whole process down. I'm ready to drill the holes for the stretchers, but because I have the one leg out of position, the left hand side of the chair is no longer a mirror image of the right hand side of the chair. So I have to go through a process of measuring each leg individually to get the angles that I need to get the stretcher in the correct position. So at this point I've taken the time to mark every chair leg so I know where it goes and each of the stretchers so that I, you know, all these parts start to look the same once you have them laid on the bench. I also uh, measured each angle and laid it out on the work board so as I'm drilling the leg I know which angle I need to use to get the correct location or at least that's the theory. So I just need to set the legs in the vise so the center line is horizontal with the top of the jaws and then I can take the bevel square and uh, use that as a guide for the angle. I'm using tape as a depth gauge to make sure that the uh, center point of the drill doesn't poke through to the other side. And of course I need to follow the same process when I'm cutting the stretchers and drilling the holes for the stretchers. It's one measurement at a time and one angle at a time. To measure the lengths of the stretchers I'm just putting some bolts into the holes and then measuring in between the uh, heads of the bolts. Here I'm reinforcing a layout line that I laid out earlier to make it a little easier for you to see. The mark that I have crossing this layout line is the total length of both bolts. So that allows me to get the total length of the stretchers without doing any math. I'll just put the length that I measured up against that line and the total length is going to be at the edge of this board. So I have all the fitting done and it's going to work. The last thing that I need to do before I can actually assemble the chair and glue it up is to saw a slot on the top of each leg. Once I get everything glued together I'm going to be driving a wedge into the top of each leg and that's just going to lock everything tightly in position and when that glue dries you know this thing is not going anywhere. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full time.